I can animate, I can character design, I can paint backgrounds, I can make a film from scratch to the storyboarding stage until the final end. So why am I not given opportunities to direct or to lead projects? What's up with that? I've also taught classes and I've led many projects. I've even come up with solutions that would help make people's jobs easier. I've been in this industry for a long time now, and I've worked from children's show to adult shows, both in feature, TV, and in short media, with different experiences in different genres. And I'm sure there's a handful of you that has done the same. Why aren't the studios that I work for for a number of years not acknowledge this? Hey guys, it's Tariko Pantoa, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about something different, and it's more about a personal relationship I've had with my work and my career. So I've been working in this industry for about 10 years now, the first two years being a freelancer, and then after that was my first year being a full-time artist at a major studio. And as time goes on, you kind of start thinking about where you'd want to be in your career with your life and what you want to do with your work. And there's a lot I can talk about this, but for this video, I just wanna talk more about my career or my job. And at the time, I was constantly thinking about how can I get higher? How can I get promoted? How can I get into more of a leadership position? And I'm pretty sure for those who have been in this industry, whether it's just for a couple of years or maybe many years, it's a thought that's passed by. Ever since Janet Chan's video about why she quit Disney Animation popped up, there's been more of a discussion about how people see their job and them being open about what it's like working in a studio and what their overall opinions and feelings are about. Now, one thing I realized is that not everyone wants to climb up in their career, whether it's to become a supervisor or a director. A lot of my friends that I personally know that are in the industry and are really good, by the way, are not people who actively fight for that. Sure, they'll pitch show ideas and they have things that they wanna do or they wanna spearhead, but I don't think many of them strive to become supervisors or directors. If it happens, it happens. But there are those who do wanna climb up. They wanna become supervisors, They want want to become directors in a studio, and they're highly ambitious for that. And as someone who is ambitious myself, and this is a thought that's crossed my mind many times, and how my feelings and thoughts have changed over the past few years, I have my own thoughts to share. So many times I told myself that I wanted to become a supervisor or director because I would learn a lot from it and I would grow from the experience. And that part is true. These experiences can help you grow and become a better artist, a better worker, a better delegator. There's a lot of skills that you can learn from being a director. And another reason why I wanted a title like that was because of visa reasons. It looks better in your case when you present documents to the USCIS and you're applying for, let's say, an O1, an EB1, eventually a green card. You wanna show that you are someone that is highly important in the industry and job titles and positions are great cases to make of that. There was a time where when I was working at Kipo, I was trying to gun for an animation supervising position. And I remember telling myself I wanted that title because it'll help me with my green card application. But at the end of the day, that didn't work out. I'm not gonna get into details about that. So I'd rather go back to talking about my views on becoming a supervisor or a director. And trust me, there is a lot of entitlement in this industry. Like they deserve something because their work fits the brand or they deserve something because they've been loyal to the studio for many years. I mean, if all you have to worry about is just working hard, staying loyal to a company for many years with the expectation of getting a leadership role, that in a way is kind of privileged or they deserve it because they're connected. And then you start to hear more stories about certain artists who have been in a studio for 10 plus years, 15 plus years, kind of being robbed of the opportunity to lead on a project because they chose someone who was younger, probably less skilled and less experienced. Like, I've been working endless hours and super hard for a studio for many years and why does this younger person get the opportunity that I deserve? I've got talent and skill, like what the hell? And the more I hear about these stories and the more I talked about my friends in the past where I voiced about my desires of becoming a director or a lead and how come I wasn't getting any of those opportunities, I started to relate to those people. And in ways, maybe I too felt entitled myself. First of all, I don't think being entitled or having an entitlement over something is necessarily bad. It just means that you have the right to something or you feel like you deserve something. The only time I see it where it's conflicting is where the reasoning is pretty selfish, you did little to nothing to deserve something, and you want special treatment compared to others. And trust me, I've seen directors who use their title and their position to justify every opinion and just to be entitled. 
Now for me, I had my own personal reasons why I wanted to be a director or supervisor. The first one, of course, is I wanted to be as a learning experience and it's the only way that I felt like could help me grow in my career. In this industry, there's always talks of once you hit being a director or supervisor, you're seen differently in a career. You're given more opportunities, more doors open to you, something that could just advance your career even further. I remember years back, I was constantly told that some studios would only accept show pitch ideas from people who have worked as directors, or they're more likely to trust someone who already has directing experience to be able to pitch a show. I remember being told that unless you're a celebrity or someone who is famous or popular, you're basically a nobody with directing experience. And I think all of this sort of influenced the way I thought about why I wanted to be a director. Not only did I want to grow and learn from my experience as a director, but I also wanted to be seen differently. A part of me wanted a bit of that prestige. I wanted to be heard, and I felt like being a director allowed me to be heard and to be taken more seriously. Overall, it was just a statement that I wanted to belong. I wanted to be part of the cool kids. I remember loving the fact of glorifying my own career. You know, I love making announcements saying, hey, I got hired at this place. I'm now a supervisor or director, that kind of stuff. And I hate to admit this, but a part of me really just wanted the image of being a director or supervisor in the industry. It looked cool. It's like a cool badge to flash around at the time without knowing how hard or how much work there is in directing, especially in the animation industry. It's not just like showing your vision or whatever. It's a lot of like, meetings it's a lot of delegation so when i see all my friends who you know we all graduated together from cal arts some friends of mine we all came from the same trainee program and a handful of them are already directors or supervisors and you know they're super swamp busy really tired and sometimes you hear more stories of them not being able to do the art or the work anymore. It's more just about delegation and leading a team. But having to spend extra hours after your normal work hours to probably do revisions, to stay in meetings, to be able to do the actual work. So the image of being a director or a supervisor is often highly idealized and glorified. And the directors I genuinely trust are not the type of people who will fight super hard just to secure a directing role. So like I said, I've been in this industry for 10 years. I've worked on some cool projects, I got some responsibilities I never thought I would ever have, but I don't think I've been placed at a higher level than what I already do. If you were to ask me, let's say three years ago or before the pandemic, my opinions would be like, no, I want the director, screw this, why isn't this happening to me? What the hell am I doing? I feel so left behind. But since then, I think my feelings have changed. And I think, you know, going through therapy and being able to talk about your honest feelings about something, like why did I want to be a director or supervisor? And I always sugarcoated it with like, oh yeah, it'll be great to learn. It'll be great for my career growth and personal growth and all that. It would be good for my green card application, which I already got. But there were a lot of other reasons that I didn't want to admit which was based on image and that prestige and just being seen differently. And let's say two years ago, I did get this amazing opportunity to become a supervising lead or director on a major production. I'm pretty sure a part of me would want to seek more. I wanted higher, I wanted more. I don't think I would have been entirely happy. And in knowing how much stress and work and a lot of my time would be put into directing, I'll always be the type of guy who will be like, I want more or I want somewhere else. When I think about my current situation when it comes to studio work or my career, you know, I'm often brought in as a story artist or a 2D animator or sometimes helping out on character design. And first of all, it's amazing that these studios or these productions trust me and my skills for their productions. As someone who does a lot of independent work and loves to just make their own stuff, it's sometimes nice not having to always call the shots and make those decisions. And being able to take on work where I'm working under a director is kind of nice and relaxing for me at least because I don't have to call the shots. And I'm there to help the team and my director to make things work. I wrap up my work hours at the end of the day and I get to work on my own personal projects. As someone who loves doing what they do, and having the time to do and work on passion projects, I'm really blessed to even have the time and the freedom to do that. So in ways, I'm just your normal employee industry artist by day, but at night, I'm just working on my own thing. I'm feeling my own jams. It's pretty awesome. And speaking of like growing and learning opportunities, I'm already doing that while I'm working under someone who gives me guidance, who tells me what they need, how to get closer to that. I don't need a position to tell me how to learn something. My current day job is gonna teach me a lot of things already. 
And as far as being seen differently or recognized for my work, I'll just let my personal projects speak for myself about my work. And I'll let my interactions with people that I know in real life decide who I am to them and what I mean to them. I think as I grew older, I learned how to prioritize what is important to me, which is, you know, having a small community of friends that I deeply trust, people that I can be vulnerable and open to, and find ways where we can talk about and make cool projects either together or by ourselves. But does this mean that I'm against being a director or supervisor? Absolutely not. I think if the opportunity and the timing works, I consider it and I'll take it. I also want to make sure that I'm going in it for the right reasons too. If you're someone in the industry who has spent some time in the industry and want to be a director, you know, let your supervisors know that you're interested in being a director or a lead and, you know, kind of contribute how you can help out the team and how you can help out with the production. Because this is a collaborative effort. If we're talking about having a good sense of entitlement, I think it's the idea of having the right to be heard and the opportunity to be given a shot to prove themselves. Everyone deserves that. I worked at a studio where I brought it up three times and you know nothing really happened, but that's fine. I mean, I already told them, they already acknowledged it, they know it. I'm just not a part of their plans when it comes to looking for directors. And that's also cool because I also have more autonomy with my own stuff. So for those crying about how they weren't given a leading opportunity at a studio and whining about that, and just talking about why you couldn't fit in in a certain cool kids club, yo, just shut up, stop crying about it, and just stop being a baby, yo. Just make something in your own free time that you're passionate about and build recognition from that. Would you rather be known as a person who just quit a studio and always complains about them and you know branding yourself as an ex major studio artist or would you rather be known for your work, whether that's creating a comic series, whether that's creating a few shorts? The problem with these types of individuals is that they're too dependent. So whether that's like too dependent on a studio and let's say they brand themselves as like an ex major studio artist, then they're dependent on branding themselves as that so people will recognize that they're the person that ranted about a certain studio for not giving them a certain opportunity. And if you're the type of person who makes excuses of why you can't do something like that, like take matters into your own hands and, you know, make something in your own volition and your own time, there's something that's apparently stopping you, you know, maybe address that and see what's causing that and why that is. So if you are entitled to be a supervisor or director, but let's say the company that you work for or a studio doesn't hand you that or an agent doesn't give you that opportunity, well, doing something on your own and making something that you directed, that you supervised, Regardless if the budget is super limited or there was no money involved and you're just having fun with it, you're going to learn a lot from it and it's going to really speak about who you are as a director with your own power. If you wanted to quit a studio because they weren't giving you an opportunity, great, that's totally fine. But there's this time where you just have to stop whining, especially if you're an ambitious person. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna talk about, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.